Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 shows how hydrogen carbonate indicator changes its color at different pH. In an investigation, a photosynthetic protoxide is immobilized and its rate of photosynthesis is measured using the indicator. A says that there is a change of color from red to magenta. You are asked to explain this. According to the table, this color change indicates an increase in pH. This is due to a decrease in carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide is acidic, which is why its reduction increases a solution's pH. This is a result of photosynthesis. In the presence of light, C valgris use up carbon dioxide for the Kelvin cycle in photosynthesis. In B, we have the setup for the investigation. The independent variable is light intensity because the student wants to check its effect on the rate of photosynthesis. B2 wants you to describe a method to determine the link between the two variables. In a design experiment question, you must describe the three variables, important procedure, reliability, safety precautions, and a control set. List down all the points you want to include, then arrange them in a logical sequence. We can set five different light intensities by varying the distance between a table lamp and the test tube containing immobilized C valgaris. You should always include at least five different values for your independent variable and state the values in your answer. A light meter can be used to measure the light intensity. The investigation should be conducted in a darkened room with no other light source. This is to prevent unintended changes in light intensity. We want to ensure that the light only comes from the table lamp we set. There are a few control variables that should be standardized. The same mass, number, and size of alginate beads are used for each distance of the lamp. A greater mass will increase the rate due to the presence of more C valgaris. 5 cm cube of hydrogen carbonate indicator is added to the test tube each time. If you do not know how much you should use, mention the same volume is used each time. We should check to ensure that all of the tubes have the same starting color so the pH is the same at the start. This is to make sure the comparison between different distances is valid. A tin tank of water can be placed between the test tube and the lamp to reduce the heating effect of the lamp. Temperature is one of the factors that can affect the rate of photosynthesis. Fluctuations of the temperature can cause a change in the rate. We should allow the same time of reaction for all distances. Use a digital stopwatch to start timing once the indicator is added to the alginate bits. After 2 minutes, record the color change. To improve the accuracy of the measurements, we can compare the color of the hydrogen carbonate indicator to a color chart and record the pH. To increase the reliability of the data, we should make three replicates for each light intensity. Then, calculate a mean value for each of them. You should always make at least three replicates. Do not use the word average instead of mean, as it is not the right mathematical term. When writing about the safety and precautions, you must identify the hazard, state the risks, and describe the precautions taken. Hydrogen carbonate indicator is an irritant. The experimenter should wear gloves and goggles throughout the experiment. We can prepare a control set by using arginate beads without C valgaris. The lack of color change will prove that our observations are due to the presence of C valgaris in light. C shows another experiment where the setup is kept in the dark for 12 hours. Predict and explain the results after 12 hours in the dark. Without light, C. valgaris does not carry out photosynthesis, only respiration. Carbon dioxide will be produced, which causes a decrease in pH. The solution will turn orange or yellow. In D, we have a diagram of the Secchi stick. It can be used to determine the number of cells per cm cube of suspension. The Secchi stick is lowered into the suspension of cells until the black and white circle is not able to be seen from above. Then, we can use a graph to determine the number of cells based on the depth. 
D1 wants you to calculate the actual number of cells per cm cube if the circle cannot be seen at a depth of 1.9 cm. First, read the log 10 cell number from the graph at a depth of 1.9 cm. The graph shows that the log 10 value is 5.36. Now, change the log 10 value to normal value, which is 10 in the power of 5.36. Express this number to the nearest 1000 cells will give you the answer. We can also use a counting chamber to determine the number of cells. The chamber shown here is 1 times 1 times 0 0.1 millimeters. 2 wants you to calculate the number of cells per cm cube of the suspension. In the diagram, 24 cells fall within the chamber. The volume of the counting chamber can be calculated by multiplying its area and depth. Convert the values to cm as that is what the answer wants. Dividing the number of cells by the volume gives you the answer. 3. Give two reasons why using the circuit stick is less accurate than using a counting chamber. The measurement using a circuit stick is subjective, as it is difficult to determine when the circuit is no longer visible. Different individuals may have different judgments. Secondly, there is an error of plus minus 0.5 mm in the ruler. Error is calculated by the smallest division of a measuring instrument divided by 2. It may be difficult to hold the circuit stick vertically. The incorrect positioning of the ruler will lead to inaccuracy in the reading. There are no replicates made by the student and the mean value is not calculated. This causes low reliability. The circuit stick used in the experiment may be different from the circuit stick used for the calibration curve. This results in an invalid interpretation of the number of cells. Lastly, Inserting a circuit stick may disturb the suspension, leading to an unequal distribution of the cells in the suspension. Question 2 is about lichens and red deer. Scientists think that the grazing of plants by red deer has affected the abundance of certain lichens. They use a grid to sample lichens in the exclosures and the graze areas. Percentage cover of the lichen is calculated to show its abundance. A1 suggest two variables that the scientists should have standardized in this investigation. The words should have refer to those variables that have not been standardized. So, your answer should not have any variables mentioned in the question. They should only include one species of trees. This is because lichens may associate differently with different types of trees. The height of the grid above ground should be controlled. Stating base, middle, and upper alone is insufficient. Measurements should be done to fix the height of the tree levels above ground. Sampling should be done on the same side of trees. For example, only sample the side facing the sunrise as the exposure of light may affect their growth. All of the trees being sampled should be the same age and size. The older and larger trees may have more lichens growing on them due to the availability of space. The orientation of the grid being placed should be fixed too. Lichens grow in a particular shape. If the grid was placed differently each time, the percentage cover may be different. 2. State one risk and the safety precaution that the scientists should take when measuring the abundance of the lichens on the tree trunks. This is an investigation being done outdoors. You can get the answers from the general risk assessment in outdoor activities. The trees and other plants in the area may cause scratches, allergies, and irritation. Some plants may release toxins. Suitable PPE such as helmets, gloves, face shields, goggles, and face masks should be worn. The sampling area may be a habitat of different animals. These animals might bite or transmit diseases such as toxoplasmosis. The experimenters should work in a group or travel with an expert to avoid these organisms. Suitable PPE should be used too. The lichen itself may cause irritation or allergic reaction. They should wear gloves, face shield, goggles, and face masks. Fungus spores may cause lung infection if inhaled. A mask should be worn at all times. The objects found in the area can be hazards too. For example, wood and falling branches may cause injury. 
they should always wear hard hats and protective footwear. They have to climb up the trees to obtain the upper height grid measurement. There is a risk of injury from falling. They should use a ladder instead of climbing the trees, or hire an expert to assist with the measurement. B. Calculate how many circles on the grid contain salted shield lichen. There are 90 circles in the grid. 63.3% of 90 is 57. The scientists perform a t-test to compare the abundance of the salted shield lichen in the two areas. 1. State a null hypothesis for the t-test. We always make a null hypothesis saying that there is no significant difference between the two mean values we are comparing. So, the null hypothesis in this case is that there is no significant difference in the abundance of salted shield lichen between exposures and grazed areas. Table 2.1 shows the result. 2. State one conclusion that can be made from the data in Table 2.1. The t-test results show that there is no significant difference between exposures and the grazed areas for the base of the tree. However, the difference is significant for the other two positions. If we just look at the percentage cover of the three positions, we can conclude that the percentage cover or abundance of lichen is greater as the height of the grid increases. If you compare the two areas for all three of the positions, you can see that the percentage cover is greater in grace areas than in exposures. 3. State two improvements the scientists could make to their study to determine the effect of grazing of red deer on the abundance of salted shell lichen in mixed woodland areas. There are a lot of other environmental factors that can affect the abundance of lichens which are not considered in this investigation. We can categorize these factors into the abiotic and biotic factors. An abiotic factor is a non-living component of an ecosystem. These include the pH of soil, humidity, and ambient temperature. We should check to see if the factors are similar for both areas. A biotic factor is a living component that shapes the ecosystem. The presence of lichen of other species and the presence of pathogens should be checked. If these factors are not the same in the areas, the difference in abundance may not be solely affected by the grazing of red deer. Lastly, the scientists should repeat the investigation in other years after 2013. A larger sample size will increase the reliability of the data. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.